اهلا ومرحبا بكم طلابنا الاعزاء طلاب وطالبات مدرسة مصطفى كامل الرسمية المتميزة للغات ببنها الأليوبية اهلا بكم في تقنية التعلم عن بعد سوف نقدم لكم بعض الدروس عبر الانترنت للمرحلة الاعدادية مادة اللغة الانجليزية Dear our dearest students of Mustafa Kamil Official Distinguished Language School in Benha Kaliubaya. Welcome to our distance learning technique. We will provide you with some online lessons for prep stage in English language. We hope you good luck and great success. Our lesson today we will explain for first the prep stage advanced English level and drama Oliver Twist so open your book pages 42 to 47 to be ready page 42 the guiding map here Oliver Twist with red pen and Mrs. Pedwin was blue pen. Next morning, something surprising happened. Oliver rushed into the hotel looking very excited. So put a circle around Oliver and underline the comment that Oliver said with red pen. I've seen him, he cried. I've seen Mr. Brownlow, and Giles has got his address. We must call on him at once, and tell him I didn't steal his box or take his money. Rose called the carriage immediately, and they set off to call on Mr. Brownlow. He and his friend Mr. Gramwig, so put a circle here around Rose, Mr. Brownlow, and Mr. Gremlig, the characters in this page. He and his friend Mr. Gremlig were delighted to see Oliver again and to find that he was not a thief as they had feared. Then they sent for Mrs. Bedwin, who had nursed Oliver through his illness. When Oliver saw Mrs. Bedwin, he ran to her and threw his arms around her. God bless me, she cried. It's my innocent boy. So we finished page 42 for reading. Now it's time for questions. Question number one about this point. The question is, what did Oliver do when he rushed into the hotel looking very excited? The answer is, Oliver rushed and tell them that they have seen Mr. Brownlow and Giles has got his address and he asked them they must call on him at once and tell him that Oliver didn't steal his box or take his money. So question number two about this point. The question is what did Rose do and where did she go? Rose called the carriage immediately and they, so Rose and Oliver, they set up to call on Mr. Brownlow. Yes, the third question about this point. The question is, what did Mr. Brownlow and his friend do after seeing Oliver? Are they sad or are they delighted? So the answer is, Mr. Brownlow and his friend, Mr. Grimwig, were delighted to see Oliver again and to find that he wasn't a thief, as they feared. Question number four about this point. The question is, what did Oliver do when he saw Mrs. Bedwin? So, when Oliver saw Mrs. Bedwin, he ran to her and threw his arms around her. And she was very pleased to see Oliver again. 
about this point, this is a comment with red pen. Comment here. I've seen him. I've seen Mr. Brownlow. And Giles has got his address. We must call on him at once and tell him I didn't steal his box or take his money. So, these words were said by Oliver to Miss Rose when he saw Mrs. Mr. Brownlow in the street and asked Giles to get his address and he wanted Miss Rose to call on Mr. Brownlow at once and tell him that Oliver didn't steal his box or take his money. Yes, the second comment. God bless me, it's my innocent boy. So, comment. These words were said by Mrs. Bedwin to Oliver and Mr. Brownlow and Mr. Grimwig, who all of them are in the room. She was very delighted to see Oliver again and he ran to her and threw his arms around her and she cried, it's my innocent boy. Turn the page to page 43. Rose then asked to speak to Mr. Brownlow alone because she did not want Oliver to hear what Nancy had told her. Rose told Mr. Brownlow all that had happened to Oliver since his disappearance. She told him how Nancy had overheard the fagin and the mysterious monks planning to harm Oliver. So put a circle around the characters, Rose, Mr. Brownlow, Oliver, Nancy, and monks. All of them are the characters of this page. She told him, so she refers to Nancy, told him, refers to Mr. Brownlow, Nancy told Mr. Brownlow of her promise to meet, sorry, she refers to Rose. Rose told Mr. Brownlow of her promise to meet Nancy on London Bridge on Sunday. Come with me, Mr. Brownlow, said Rose. So, put underline here with pink pen and the guiding map told us Rose with red pen, Mr. Brownlow with green pen. Come with me, Mr. Brownlow, said Rose. We must somehow get hold of this terrible man, Mox. Why does he want to harm Oliver, his own brother? Mm, I don't know, said Mr. Brownlow. But I will come with you on some day. Now, let us go and see Oliver again. Come, my dear. Here we finish reading. Now about the question. Question number one about this point. The question is, why did Rose ask to speak to Mr. Brownlow alone? Rose asked to speak to Mr. Brownlow alone because she didn't want should she didn't want Oliver to hear what Nancy had told her. And Rose told Mr. Brownlow all that had happened to Oliver since his disappearance. She told him how Nancy had overheard Fagin and the mysterious monks planning to harm Oliver. Also, she told him of her promise to meet Nancy on London Bridge on Sunday. Number 2. What did Rose tell Mr. Brownlow? All of this answer, Rose told Mr. Brownlow that all that had happened to Oliver since his disappearance, and she told him how Nancy had overheard Fagin and the mysterious monks planning to harm Oliver. Also, she told him of her promise to meet Nancy on London Bridge on Sunday. The third question. What did Rose ask him to do to help Oliver? Rose asked Mr. Brownlow to come with her, and they must somehow get hold of this terrible man Monks. And she wondered why did 
Why did this man want to harm Oliver, his own brother? The fourth question. Did Mr. Brownlow agree to help Oliver? Yes, he agreed. He told Hare, or he told Nan uh, Rose, that he will come with Hare on Sunday and he will help Oliver. Now for comment. This one. Come with me, Mr. Brownlow. We must somehow get hold of this terrible monks, terrible man monks, why does he want to harm Oliver, his own brother? These words were said by Rose to Mr. Brownlow when she asked him to help Oliver from his brother, Terrible Man Monks. The second comment with green pen that refers that Mr. Brownlow said these words. I do, no, do not know, but I will come with you on Sunday. Now, let us go and see Oliver again. Come, my dear. These words said by Mr. Brownlow to Rose, when he agreed to help Oliver and asked her to come back to Oliver and didn't leave him to sit alone. Now we finish page 43. Turn to page 44. The guiding map here that there were four characters. Nancy, we use red pen. Sykes, we use blue pen. Mr. Brownlow, we use green pen. And Rose, we use pink pen. Okay, let's read. Next Sunday, Bill Sykes and Fagin were drinking together when Nancy said she was going out. Where are you going? asked Sykes. Not far, said Nancy. Mm, not far is right. You are staying here, said Sykes, and he got up and locked the door. Nancy protested, but Sykes kept the door locked and would not let her out. So, Nancy did not meet Rose and Mr. Brownlow that Sunday. But the next Sunday, Nancy gave Sykes a strong drink. And when he was asleep, she went out of the house and made her way to London Bridge. She saw Rose and Mr. Brownlow on the bridge, but she did not see a man standing in the shadows, a spy of Fagin. Nancy, Rose and Mr. Brownlow talked together in whispers, but Fagin's spy could hear them. We must find monks, said Mr. Brownlow. We must discover his secret. If not, you must give us Fagin. I will not do it, cried Nancy. Fagin is evil, but no more evil than I am myself. I will not give him to you. Then put monks into my hands, said Mr. Brownlow. No one will ever know that you helped us to find him, I promise you. Then Nancy told them that they could not find monks at the Three Cripples Inn. He is a tall, strong looking man with dark hair and deep set eyes. Ah. Has he got a larger red mark, like a burn on his throat? Asked Mr. Brownlow. Mm. Do you know him? Nancy asked in surprise. Hmm. I think I do, said Mr. Brownlow. You have helped us, Nancy, said Rose. How can we help you? Mm. You can't help me. It's too late for me. This is for reading for page 44. Now it's time for asking some question. Question about this point. The question is, how did Sykes prevent Nancy from going out? So Sykes 
had got up and locked the door and when Nancy protested, Sykes kept the door locked and would not let her out. A second question here about this point. Did Nancy meet Mr. Brownlow and Rose that Sunday? Why or why not? Mm. Nancy did not meet Rose or Mr. Brownlow that Sunday. Why? Because Sykes kept the door locked and would not let her out of the house and didn't let her to meet anyone. The third question here is about this point. How did Nancy go out the next day? So, Nancy, the next day or the next Sunday, Nancy gave Sykes a strong drink. And when he was asleep, she went out of the house and made her way to London Bridge. And she saw Rose and Mr. Brownlow on the bridge. About this point. Who was standing in the shadows and hear what happened? Mm, a spy Fagans. A spy Fagan who was standing in the shadow and hear what happened. About this point. What did Nancy tell them about monks? Nancy told them that she could sorry that they could find monks at the three cripples inn and she described him as he was a tall man strong looking man with dark hair and deep set eyes this time for comment this one where are you going these words were said by sykes to nancy when nancy standing up and was going out of the house and he asking her where were you going? The second one. We must find monks. We must discover his secret. If not, you must give up, give us Fagan. Comment. These words were said by Mr. Brownlow to Nancy. When you wanted to know monks and want to find him, and if Nancy refused, she must give her, give them Fagin. This one, comment. I will not do it. Fagin is evil, but no more evil than I am myself. I will not give him to you. These words were said by Nancy to Mr. Brownlow when he asked her to find monks and he he want to discover his secret and if she refused she must give them fagin and she refused to to do anything of this and said that fagin was evil and no more evil than her she herself this one then put monks into my hands. No one will ever know that you helped us to find him. I promise you. Comment. These words were said by Mr. Brownlow to Nancy. When he begged her to tell them about monks. And he asked her to put monks into his hands. And he promised her that no one will never no hair or discover hair and he will her help with hair if she helped them to find f uh, monks this one he's a tall strong looking man with dark hair and deep set eyes comment these words were said by nancy to mr brownlow when she described the monks and Mr. Brownlow asked her to tell them about monks and she tell them that they can find monks at the three cripples and she described him as a tall strong looking man 
with dark hair and deep set eyes. The last comment. You have helped us, Nancy. How can we help you? These words were said by Rose to Nancy as she found that Nancy helped them a lot. She told them more information about monks, Fagin, and their gang, and she wanted to help Nancy. Turn the page to page 45. The writing map here, Nancy with red pen, Mr. Brownlow with green pen, Rose with pink pen. Nonsense, cried Mr. Brownlow. We can find you a safe place, either in England or in another country. You can live there safely, free from Fagin and his friends. Mr. Brownlow here talked with Nancy and tried to give her some solution for her case. I cannot say her. I'm chained to my old life, and I cannot leave it. I'm frightened, but I must go home. Home? asked Rose. Yes, miss, home. The home I have made for myself. Now, good night, and God bless you both. And Nancy hurried away in the darkness. Behind her, the spy who had watched and listened watched and listened followed her close behind then he rushed off to tell Fagin now we finish reading and now asking some question question number 1 how can mr brownlow help nancy this point he can help her by finding her a safe place, either in England or in another country. She can live there safely, free from Fagan or any friends or the gang or her boyfriend, the bad man Sykes or anyone. Question number two. Did Nancy agree with Mr. Brownlow's idea? Mm, no, she didn't, ag she didn't agree. She said that she was chained to her old life and she can't leave it. She was frightened and must go home and refused his idea. The third question. Where did Nancy go after she left them? Nancy hurried away in the darkness and she went home. But behind her, the spy who watched and listened followed her close behind. What did the spy do? And where did he go? Mm. The spy watched Nancy and listened all what he said, what she said, and followed her close behind. Then he rushed off to tell Fagin comment nonsense we can find you a safe place either in England or in another country you can live there safely free for fri free from Fagan and his friends these words were said by mr. Brownlow when he tried to, to say any solution or any idea to Nancy to keep her from their old life and he find a solution for her that he will find her a safe place either in England or in another country that she can live there safely from Fagan and his friends mm, but she refused the second comment I cannot say her. I'm a chain to all my life and I cannot leave it I'm frightened but I must go home these words were said by Nancy to Mr. Brownlow when she refused his idea to keep in a safe place either in England or in another country and live her bad or old life. 
and she told him that she was chained to her old life and she cannot leave it and she must go home the second comment yes miss home the home i have made for myself now good night and god bless you both these words were said by nancy to rose when rose asked her surprisingly home and nancy told her yes that she was going to her home and to her own life the home she had made for herself and she left them and said god bless bless you both comment home this question where was said by rose to nancy when she was very surprised that nancy said she was frightened and she must go home and rose was very sad that nancy will go her home again and then agree mr brownlow's idea turn the page this page about bell sykes the bad man the guiding map here sykes with a blue pen fagan with a white highlight so let's start reading when fagan heard that nancy had done yes what what's meant but by, by had done had done that she told all the information about fagan and sykes to another man or another anybody else had done he was frightened he realized that he and all his gang of thieves were in great danger as soon as he could he found bell sykes at first sykes did not believe him but when he did or but when he believed him he rushed to the door in a terrible rage. Hear me speak a word, Bill, cried Fagin. Well, growled Sykes, you won't be too violent, will you? Be careful, Bill. Sykes said nothing, but Paul opened the door and rushed out into the street. Okay, question number one. How did Fagin feel after he heard what Nancy had done? Mm. Fagin was very frightened because he realized that he and all his gang of thieves were in great danger. Question number two. What did Sykes do after he knew from Fagin what Nancy had done? Yes. Sykes rushed to the door in a terrible rage. He didn't believe at first, but when he believed, he rushed to the door in a terrible rage. Comment? Hear me speak a word, Bill. These words were said by Fagan to Bell Sykes. When Bell Sykes believed what Fagan said and rushed to the door in a terrible rage and he thought that Bell will make some bad things. The second comment You won't be too violent, will you? Be careful, Bell. These words also said by Fagan to Bell Sykes when he felt that Bell Sykes with a great great anger and he will make some bad things he will kill he will smash he will do any bad things well comment this word was was sent by Sykes to Fagan when he wanted to make, make Sykes come back and calm him down 
but Fagin cannot calm down Sykes and Sykes rushed out of the door and said nothing opened the door and rushed out in the street turn the page now to the last page pick up your red pen and blue pen Nancy and Sykes in this page Nancy's death Sykes entered his house and walked over to the bed to the bed where Nancy lay get up he said it's you Bill said the girl with a smile a candle was burning but Sykes threw it on the door on the floor there's light enough for what I've got to do he said staring at the girl Bill why are you looking at me like that Sykes Sykes grabbed her by the hair and dragged her into the middle of the room you know you she devil he cried you were watched last night on London Bridge don't kill me Bill the girl cried I've not betrayed you come away with me and let's go to a safe place and leave this life behind Sykes grabbed her, his pistol to shoot her, but thought better of it. Instead, he smashed the pistol into Nancy's face and knocked her to the floor. There was blood everywhere. When Nancy tried to get up, Sykes hit her with a heavy stick and knocked her down. This time, she did not get up. now time for question question number one what did Sykes do with Nancy after he threw the candle on the floor yes Sykes grabbed hair by the hair and dragged hair into the middle of the room the, the first action he did the next question what did Sykes Sorry, what did Nancy suggest the Sykes to do? What's her idea? Her idea that she wanted him to come away with her and let's go to a safe place and leave all this life behind. How did Sykes kill Nancy? Um, Nancy's death. Sykes grabbed his pistol to shoot her, but thought better of it, and instead he smashed the pistol into Nancy's face and knocked her to the floor. There was blood everywhere. When Nancy tried to get up, Sykes hit her with a heavy stick and knocked her down again. Mm, this time she did not get up. Comment? There were three comments with blue pen. Number one, get up. This what these words were said by Sykes to Nancy when he entered the house and walked over to the bed where Nancy lay out. They. The the comment number two, there's light enough for what I've got to do. These words were said also by Sykes to Nancy when he threw the candle on the floor and made the, the room very dark and the light is enough for what he had got to do the third comment in blue you know you she devil you were watched last night on london bridge these words were said by sykes to nancy when he grabbed the hair by the hair and dragged the hair into the middle of the room and he was very angry of her that the spy told Fagin what all she had done the next comment in red pen it's you Bill 
These words were said by Nancy to Bill Sykes when he entered the house and walked over to the bed where uh, Nancy lay and she got up and opened her eyes to see Sykes in front of her. The second comment, Bill, why are you looking at me like that? These words were said by Nancy to Sykes when he threw the candle on the floor and the room was very dark and he told her that there is light enough for what he had got to do and she was very frightened of him. The third comment in red, don't kill me Bill, I have not betrayed you, come away with me and let's go to a safe place and leave this life behind. These words were said by Nancy also to Bill Sykes when he mm, tried to kill her or she felt that he will kill her and she begged him not to kill her and she makes some suggestion or give him as, uh, an idea that they will come away of uh, he will come away with her and let's go to a safe place and leave this leave this life behind that's the end so i hope you get some benefits from this video if you have any question please write it in the comments under this video and I will answer all your questions. With my regards and I hope you all success and good luck. Goodbye.